the original Halal Steakhouse. Try our amazing food, all freshly prepared on order with our secret recipes, guaranteed to send those taste buds wild. Join the Steakout Frenzy for your mesmerizing Steakout experience. Visit our restaurants in Tooting, Norbury and Harrow. Next time, don't just go out, Steakout. Franchise opportunities available. Travel made easy with Travel Pack, established for 30 years. With exciting offers on flights, hotels and holidays, with a wide range of destinations at great prices. For the latest flight and holiday offers, visit TravelPack.com. The Yusuf Islam Foundation presents Bromsbury College. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Established almost 20 years ago, we are a secondary boys' school ranked amongst the highest in the London Borough of Brent. In 2013, students took an average of 14 GCSEs, and almost half of all GCSE grades were A star to A. Our subjects include the full national curriculum, plus PE, Arabic, French, and much more. We also offer an exciting array of after-school clubs. Come and visit us to see how your son can benefit. Celebrate your wedding in style and elegance at Mulberry Banqueting Hall, Commercial Road E1. We are your perfect partner for segregated weddings. We have separate halls, kitchens and service for men and women, with up to 900 seating capacity and over 100 car parking spaces. For massive season discounts, reserve your dates today. Call Daisy Wedding on 020 7033 4242. Your perfect wedding partner. Leica Mobile is giving you a fantastic offer to call Bangladesh when you buy the National Bundle. Get 500 minutes, unlimited text to any UK network, unlimited Leica Mobile to Leica Mobile calls, and unlimited internet for just £10. Plus, call Bangladesh landlines for 1p per minute and mobiles for 3p per minute. So, what are you waiting for? To buy the bundle, dial the code on the screen. For more information and your free Leica Mobile SIM, visit leicamobile.co.uk today. Terms and conditions apply. Leica Mobile. Call the world for less. are filled with stories of crime so what is the reality of crime in society and what are some of its effects join us for this discussion and more only on women's am Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to Women's AM. You've of course tuned in to the Lifestyle Show for Women where we highlight current affairs, discuss topics affecting you and much more. We've got another very interesting topic for you sisters today inshallah and we're here from our London studios to bring to you our viewers issues that are seldom discussed and we're of course joined by our sisters on the panel. So we have with us today Sister Zainab and Sister Ayan, our regular Regular Women's AM panelists. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum. How are you both? Alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. And our very special guest today is Sister Rukshana Mia, who's a solicitor. Assalamu alaikum, Sister. Alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. It's great, great to, to have you here. here. Alhamdulillah. You. So, sisters, you know the blessed days of Hajj are over. We've had a fantastic celebration of Eid, and on my way in this morning, I was thinking to myself, I have to ask my sisters, what is their favourite thing about the Dean? So, Sister Zain, I'm going to come to you for this question. Um, it's a bit of a hard one, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I think what what I love especially about it is just how deep and comprehensive it is. You know, you kind of grow up thinking of Islam as just stories of the prophets or just five pillars or just fast. You know, it's a bit. It can be a little bit dry for the for the youth to, to, to for it to be explained like this. And then the older I get and the more I read, it's like Subhana is so amazing. Like as a lawyer, this sister probably can appreciate this. It's the detail of Islam on even the smallest of issues is just extraordinary. It's just beautiful, and it's, it's like wow. And you can see how it really works in real life. Well. Um, I have to say the honour that's placed on women is my favourite bit because I think growing up with a mum who was slightly feminist and having a <laughs> negative view sort of on the way women are perceived, I think when I finally started looking into Islam properly, it was just for me, it was like, wow, this is amazing. Completely different was sort of the ideas that I grew up with, the ideas that are out there. And I thought, mashallah, you know, this is amazing. You know, I don't, I don't, need, any other, I don't need anything else really. Absolutely. 
Sister Ikshana. Um, well, drawing on what Sister Zainab said, also that is very important. Um, I think for me, it's the sort of importance of community that it instills. Um, mm. The fact that family are very important, uh, your wider community are very important. The sort of uh, culture and atmosphere that's present at the masjids. You were talking earlier about the sense of ummah. Yes, think, you know, yes. Yeah, it's a really beautiful yeah, part of it. Yeah, it is a very beautiful part of it and it makes you feel very belonging. Mm, absolutely. So. I think for me, we, we, and you know, earlier I was, right. I was telling you that when I wasn't uh, practicing as much, you know, I kind of felt like there was something missing in my life and when I found, um, you know, Islam and I, you know, I kind of learned more about it, it gave me the sense of completeness and I think that's something a lot of people experience and it, it really does just bring a lot of comfort to your life, alhamdulillah. Well, really great Great start and a great discussion there, but let's move on to our first segment of the morning now with News Bites. In this segment, we take a look at news stories of interest from around the world. So, sisters, what have we got today? Sister Ayan. Um, I've got one from the Express. A uh, new study suggests women are better doctors than men. And this is coming from a research that was done in uh, Quebec University in Montreal, Canada. And they uh, say that according to their research, they found that women were better doctors. Um, and according to their study, they found that the female doctors actually spent more time with their patients, um, whereas the male doctors saw many more patients during the day than females. And one of the researchers said that actually just because, you know, men see more patients in a day doesn't mean that, that the female doctors who spend more time with their patients are less productive. It's just productivity in a different way. And it's less likely with them that their patients will come back because they're worried over maybe a minute detail that might have been, you know, missed or not explained to them. So I thought, yeah, you know, I kind of agree with them. Women are better all around anyway. <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm biased. And on so. that note, <laughs> move on to Sister Zainab for our next story, inshallah. Uh, yes, very disturbing and sad story from the, the Metro. Mm -hmm. A young girl trafficked into the UK to have her organs harvested and sold. So this uh, poor young girl, she was uh, from Somalia, and uh, she was brought into the UK to have her uh, organs harvested. Um, subhanAllah, it's, you know this issue of uh, human trafficking for... A, a number of different reasons, whether it's uh, domestic servitude, so like basically the house slave, um, labour, um, sex industry, warfare, begging, we see a lot of this, and, um, and now this issue of uh, uh, organ okay. harvesting mm -hmm. of, of children mainly. Um, SubhanAllah, this is a widespread thing, it happens all over the world, uh, from people all over the world. Um, so a lot of the victims are from uh, Vietnam, the Niger Nigerian, Bangladeshi, Chinese, but that's not just that it doesn't really cover all of the, the issues at all the the countries subhanallah apparently in the uk um uh human trafficking has increased by over 50 percent uh, just in one year so you can see this is something that is just uh, continuing uh, to build uh subhanallah you know this is it's a, it's a growing problem um and the current framework the current efforts to, to be able to stop this is, is just not working it's just it's just completely failing um, subhanAllah, it's for me as uh, a Muslim, you know, when you know that this affects um, the victims are Muslim and non-Muslim, but also the perpetrators are Muslim and non-Muslim, this is a really disturbing thought, isn't it? How far some of us have gone from our Islamic values, that this uh, misusing and treating people as objects is something that is so far removed from Islam, it has nothing to do with it. Um, so we have to start asking ourselves as a community, why are we embracing these other values of view, you know, viewing life as uh, an opportunity for gain at any cost, whether it's a person or an object or whatever you it know, is? We talk about oppression on a wider scale, and we talk about how you know, in, some, in some places you know, uh, whole schools of people are oppressed, but we mm -hmm. don't often think about oppression on an individual scale, and this is an example of yeah. it. You know, trafficking is, is yeah. a form of oppression, and it's definitely something that we do need to talk about. Absolutely, and even the reasons for the trafficking, some people are forced into this, are literally kidnapped and sent abroad and some people do it out of this, this search and this need for uh, a better life. Um, it, the issue of poverty is something that really I just find ridiculous. It's, it's something that we should, as, especially coming from nation, many nations that are, are full of minerals, oil, you know, Nigeria, subhanAllah, is a, is a booming oil uh, industry there but look at the people, look how poor they are and look at the things that people are doing in order to, to, to get abroad and to be able to live that better life. Mm -hmm. And this is something that, subhanAllah, we have, it always comes down to rubbish leaders who are either selfish or incompetent or, and a system that is completely, is not fit for use, mm -hmm. you know, subhanAllah. And we have this amazing deal with this amazing system and look what our people, 
Absolutely. Really well, Sister Ayan, let's come to you for our next story now. Uh, yeah, after that sort of <laughs> depressing note. Um, but yeah, this one is from The Telegraph. Uh, children who spend time in nurseries more likely to develop be behavioural problems. And this article is kind of discussing um, children who from a young age probably uh, are, aren't spending that much time with their parents, so children who are being looked after by childminders and children who go to nurseries. And the Ofsted actually, funnily enough, um, warned that too many early years providers were not good enough um, and they even compared, you know, um, sort of the qualifications that early learner uh, providers get mm -hmm. to that of vets and they're saying they're not even, you know, trained up as much as vets are, you know, and I thought that's a really weird so comparison really, yeah, to give, absolutely. you know, children and animals and it's, <laughs> in any case, um, and also a report published in the child uh, journal, uh, in the journal Child Care said that children who spent more time in daycare centres were more likely to be hyperactive and children receiving more care by childminders were more likely to have peer problems. So so for me, this is kind of highlighting an issue that kind of stems around sort of, you know, the, the worth of, of, of parenthood, of motherhood. Mm -hmm. And it goes back to many women don't want to go back to work after they've had children. They want to stay home and look after their kids. And a lot of them are being denied that. And now they're talking about the fact that nurseries and childcare are not up to the standards for looking after children and it's affecting them. You know, why not give the mothers, you know, the, the, you know, the right, the, the absolute right to stay home and look after their children and support them in doing that rather than trying to shove them back to work mm -hmm. and then having this as the end result of mm -hmm. children who well, aren't well adjusted. Well, I think that women um, in today's society do fail uh, face a sort of um, a pressure from both sides. They are expected to be the perfect mothers and you know stress is put on the first seven years of a child's um, sort of upbringing as so imperative to their development. Mm -hmm. Um, but at the same time, we live in an economy where it doesn't really uh, accommodate for women to stay at home, for the men to be the primary caregiver, uh, sorry, uh, breadwinner. And so women are required to go to work. Um, there is a sort of, you, you, you associate your career with affluence and sort of things like that as well. So there is of definitely this sort of, women are stuck between a rock and a hard place as to what yeah. they have to do. And if the childcare of a decent quality isn't out there, then it puts you in a worse position, yeah, really. Absolutely. Yeah. Like you said, there is pressure from both sides. Yeah. Um, Sister Zainab, let's come to you for our next story. Yes, yeah, another really sad story from the BBC News um, website. Uh, sniper shoot, uh, serious snipers shoot at pregnant women, UK doctor claims. So we have um, a lot of doctors from all over the world, and they've gone uh, to help the, the people out there. Um, and this doctor is one of these individuals, and he's, he's come back with this account that um, there are deliberate shootings of civilians, and they, they're, they're shooting in specific places as well um, to, to cause the most injury. And he was speaking specifically about a pregnant woman that um, uh, was shot in, in the uterus to essentially kill the, the child, isn't it? This, this appears to be the, the reason, and how he had to remove this... Um, this uh, dying child from, from its mother. It's a really depressing, uh, very distressing story. But he's making, he's making the point that Subhana, he's, been, he's worked in many different war zones and this is, the, this is probably the worst he's ever seen because of this targeted, targeted um, uh, shootings. shootings. You know, it's, it's upon children, it's upon